Hi, my name is Kevin, and welcome to my KubeCon talk. Uh, today we'll be talking about Kubernetes cron jobs. Does anyone actually use this thing in production? Well, the short answer is that yes, um, people do. Uh, at Lyft, we run um, some 500 plus cron jobs in our Kubernetes clusters currently. And um, in this talk, we'll talk a little bit about what it's been like. Um, but before we get too far into that, let me start by introducing myself. Um, my name is Kevin Yang, and I currently work on the Compute Platform team at Lyft, where we work on um, building out our Kubernetes, Kubernetes environment that powers all of Lyft's services and compute needs. Um, this has been a multi-year journey, and um, there's been a lot of things that we've learned along the way and that we're excited to share with the community. Um, if you're ever interested in getting in contact with me, um, my Twitter and email links are uh, posted in the slides. All right, let's get into it. So what is this talk? Um, in this talk, I'll tell you some stories about cron job failures that we've experienced operating um, a cron platform using Kubernetes at Lyft. Um, along the way, I'll try to surface and poke holes at some of the flaws of cron jobs that we've seen um, from both the technical perspective, but more importantly, um, the user experience. We'll discuss kind of how we moved is how we smooth out some of these rough edges to deliver a better experience to our engineers that use our platform. And finally, we'll discuss some of the broader lessons that we learned um, operating in such a platform using Kubernetes and what this might all mean for you. So why should you care? Well, maybe you're like us and you run a Kubernetes platform at your company and you might have um, dozens or hundreds or even thousands of developers that um, run compute workloads on your Kubernetes clusters. Maybe you use cron jobs directly. Maybe you run you know, lots of cron jobs, just like we do. Um, or maybe you're just looking for some info on distributed um, cron scheduling, um, repeated schedule task platforms, and you want to see what Kubernetes has to offer. Um, well, regardless of all these things, um, one of the uh, main things that uh, you should care about is what the user experience looks like for people who use Kubernetes. Um, cron jobs, in particular, we found at Lyft are, you know, one particular point in one particular workload type in Kubernetes that hasn't gotten as much love as some of the others. Um, and I think there's a lot that we can learn um, from kind of dissecting the issues and um, and figuring out well how could we can make it better. But first, let's start with some story time. It's generally good practice to have observability for your cron tasks to make sure that you're alerted when they fail. At Lyft, developers do so most commonly by emitting metrics in their application code and use our alerting system to page the on-call um, when those issues happen. So let's imagine you're a developer at Lyft and you're just paged for a cron job failure and it is your job to investigate what's going on. So you know a little thing or two about cron jobs and Kubernetes, and you use some tools to start inspecting what the status of all these different objects are. So first you might do a kubectl get cron job, um, maybe you look at its event status, and then from there you can see that um, the cron job has spun up a job object. And from the job object, you can see that it spun up a pod object to actually run your application code. Well, the problem is, you know, you're probably at the point now where you're looking at these Kubernetes objects and you just got paged for failure. And by the time you actually look at it, the pod's already gone. Um, those of you who have some experience working with Kubernetes know that this is far too common um, and a pretty big annoyance when trying to debug issues with applications on Kubernetes. Because pods are ephemeral, oftentimes um, it's hard to look at them because they've already been terminated. So you can't look at any pod events. You don't know what the status of your containers are. Um, so what can you do? Well, I guess you could look at your application logs if they're you know, logged somewhere out to a log pipeline. Um, but more often than not, you're kind of stuck and you have to kind of wait for the next time the cron runs to catch in the act. 
Um, meanwhile, you might have asked your ops team, and the platform engineers are probably scratching their head as well. You know, there's nothing that they can do either. Um, and so you really have to wait until next time the cron runs to catch in the act. Or worse, the cron job failed too many times in a row. Um, maybe this happened overnight and you just got paged for it in the morning, and now it won't start at all. And you have to go into Kubernetes and explicitly tell the job to run. This is a pretty, um, pretty annoying thing to have to do, um, and it's definitely something that we've run into Lyft several times. Now, here's a different scenario that happened once. Um, we had an incident that took down our cron environment for several days and took a lot of time and engineering um, effort to debug and figure out. But there's a lot of interesting things going on here that helped us learn more about what's going on with cron depths under the hood and will help showcase some of the drawbacks and um, technical issues that impact cron job performance. So this started out, this instance started out with a lot of user reports started came, coming in. Um, we saw a lot of users that were starting to report issues with their crons um, failing to run intermittently. And now anyone who has worked at a company large enough to handle these support requests knows that um, there's varying levels of detail that users provide. But we had some we had some users who actually put in a lot of effort into some investigation, and that kind of helped us uh, eventually cause the issue. So one astute user actually filled out the ticket form and attached some of the investigative work that they've done. Um, and specifically, they showed us this chart, which um, is a chart of log volume. And every time their cron runs, it logs some messages. And for the times when it didn't run, there's obviously no logs emitted. And so we saw a chart that looks something like this, where you know there were several iterations of their cron job that emitted their logs and showed that their application code was executing. But every so often, there'd be a hole or a gap um, where there are no uh, logs emitted, which indicated that their application code didn't run. Now, as a platform engineer, we looked at that and you know we thought, is this something that happens on all crons or just a few crons? And sure enough, most of the crons that ran on our platform uh, worked fine. They did not have any such issues. Um, but there were some crons where we saw the same kind of log uh, indicator that showed that application code was not running. Um, so what gives? At this point, we started looking into um, what is actually happening with the cron job controller under the hood. And one of the things that we did was um, looked at the log level of the cube controller manager, which runs the cron job controller. Um, some background on the cron job controller. Um, the way that it works uh, is that it runs a sync the world operation every 30 seconds. And so what this does is Essentially, there's one big loop in the code that lists all cron jobs every 30 seconds and iterates them, iterates through them one by one, um, doing whatever reconciliation, uh, whether that is invoking the cron job, doing some sort of bookkeeping, um, or whatnot. So when we were looking at this loop, um, we started noticing something interesting by printing out the logs of the cron job controller, which was that um, in our cron environment, we had about you know, 200 to 300 cron jobs at the time. For the first 20 or so um, iterations of the loop, that is the first 20 cron jobs that were processed, um, we saw that uh, they were all processed pretty quickly. Um, the time to process them was really low, and um, you know, the cron job controller was behaving as expected. Where we started seeing some issues was after the 20th iteration. Um, we saw that the times are nearly 10 times slower uh, to process crons for the remaining you know, 200 plus crons that were in the list. Um, so what might explain this? Well, it was rate limiting. What the cron job controller does in sync operation is it actually you know, sends some API requests to the API server using the cube client that the cube controller manager uses. And what we noticed was that um, there's actually rate limiting that was bogging down the cron controller. 
sure enough, the defaults for the uh, for the acute client rate limit lined up with the loop iteration times we were seeing. Um, so it turns out when you run, you know, 200 or more cron jobs, you know, those times add up, and you start seeing loops uh, that take longer than 30 seconds, and hence you start seeing cron jobs get backed up as the cron job control is bogged down by rate limiting. So what does this mean for our applications, our cron jobs? Um, well, a lot of our cron jobs had this field called starting deadline second set. And what this field does is essentially tells the cron job controller to stop trying to run it if it has um, been delayed by you know, the starting deadline seconds duration. And so what we would see in an application is that right before the cron was supposed to run, say T1, um, that was the last time that the cron job processed, uh, that the cron job controller processed that cron job. Now, the cron job controller loop took, um, you know, say longer than 30 seconds. And so by then, the starting deadline seconds have already expired. And so the next time the cron job controller, you know, inspects that cron job and determines if it has to run, well, it sees that the starting deadline seconds has already expired. And so therefore, it doesn't invoke it. And so this is why our applications, um, our cron jobs, sometimes saw that they had missed their schedule because deep down the cron job controller loop had taken too long to process and had missed a particular scheduled time. What did these experiences tell us? Well, we learned that cron jobs can fail in many surprising ways that we did not know about before. The first of which is the too many missed starts condition, which is where if a cron job has failed too many times in a row, then the Kubernetes machinery ends up giving up entirely on trying to run them and requires human intervention to start the cron job again. Next, we saw that um, API client rate limiting can be a factor. When the cron job controller does the sync the world operation, it requires um, a lot of client uh, calls to the API server, and these can get rate limited and impact the speed at which the cron job controller can process and sync cron jobs. This combined with starting deadline seconds uh, can lead to some disastrous effects where cron jobs get missed entirely. So aside from the technical issues, we also saw that cron jobs in general are quite difficult to monitor, understand, and debug. There's not a lot of observability that ships with cron jobs by default, and you have to know a lot about the system and the underlying um, behaviors of Kubernetes in order to debug these and understand what's going on. As we saw through our instance, it took a lot of effort um, and learning from the uh, Kubernetes team to be able to uh, understand what's going on here and be able to root cause the instance. And further, cron job does leak a lot of abstractions from pods and jobs. Um, there are a lot of knobs to configure, especially regarding retries and concurrency behavior. And it's a delicate balance to strike um, in order to not surprise your developers and your users. We also saw that um, failures are quite difficult to recover from. In the example of the on call that got paged, well, it would be nice if they could just you know, rerun the cron job. If it had failed, you know, maybe there was a service dependent on in their application. From a platform engineering perspective, we really don't have a great way of understanding the performance of the platform. You know, we got a lot of user reports of issues, but it'd be nice if we could be alerted on these and um, not have to rely on users to tell us that something is broken. So what did we do about this? One of the things that we did was enhance the observability of cron jobs on our Kubernetes platform. Um, by introducing trace points at various stages in the cron's life cycle. So this can be things like, you know, when the cron controller decides to invoke the cron, when the application code actually starts, um, when the uh, application code finishes, whether it was um, retried or, uh, you know, exited success successfully. And at each of these points, we emit metrics so that we can know um, some details of the performance, like the start delay. How long did the cron job take to actually start running application code from when it was expected to run? Um, or the runtime of the application container itself and the exit codes. And these are all things that our developers 
um, want to know and want to be alerted on, but didn't want to have to write and maintain themselves. And so as a platform, we were able to um, have all these metrics um, built right in by default and have alerts created for any cron job that was onboarded into our platform. And this allowed us to get rid of a lot of bespoke, alarming, and um, metrics code from our applications and our services. Next was disaster recovery. So we saw earlier that when a cron job failed, oftentimes an on-call didn't have really anything they could do about it. Um, so one thing we created was a run cron button, which essentially allows you to run a cron ad hoc. So this is useful for recovering from failures, as well as testing out new cron jobs and debugging existing ones. Instead of having to wait around for the cron to run, you can just hit the button and immediately see the effects of your cron running and your application code doing its work. Finally, we fixed the long-standing too many missed starts problem in our Kubernetes fork, so we never had to deal with stuck crons again. Once again, this was a problem that we had seen a lot of times at Lyft, where after a cron has failed 100 times in a row, then Kubernetes stops trying to run it entirely. And so by fixing this in our fork, um, we never had to deal with that situation again, where we had to manually reinvoke crons um, to get them started again. So now you're probably thinking to yourself, that seems like a lot of work to get Kubernetes cron jobs to a usable state. What does this all mean for me? Should I still try to use them? Is this the only option? There's a lot of nuance to picking technologies like a distributed scheduled task runner. Here are some things to consider before making the same decisions that we did at Lyft. First, ask yourself, what do your users really need? The primary feature you should have figured out for engineers using your cron platform is observability. Based on our experience talking to devs at Lyft, devs mostly want to know, did it run? Did it run successfully? And how long did it take? At Lyft, we built these metrics and alerts into our cron platform so all cron jobs get them by default. These monitoring tools are essential to allow engineers to self-service and be able to operate their workloads, no matter the platform. They allow people to have high confidence in the reliability of their cron without having to know Kubernetes as intimately as platform engineers do, and really help scale the operations side of a large engineering org by making it easier for people to debug issues on their own. Next, you need to be able to run a cron ad hoc to debug or recover from incidents. No one wants to sit around waiting to catch a cron in the act, and especially in today's microservices world, Failures can happen, and we must be able to fail gracefully and make it easy to recover from failure. Because of this, it is essential that your cron platform has an ad hoc invocation tool. That way, say a downstream service is down and causes your cron job to fail, at least the on-call is alerted using the alerts that we just mentioned, and can rerun the job without having to wait for hours or even days for the machinery to invoke the cron again. This is absolutely essential for, say, once a week cron jobs that do things like generate generate reports for your company. An added benefit of a tool like this is that it allows engineers to develop new cron jobs and observe them running live in your staging and prod environments. As much as we try to make configuration simple, inevitably there will be some trial and error involved when deploying new code for the first time. There's nothing worse than having to wait to see your new code come into effect, so having a tool be able to trigger your new code and be able to watch it you know, work for the first time is really helpful, helpful for developing and debugging new crons. So those are the user-facing features that we focus on delivering with our cron platform using Kubernetes cron jobs at Lyft. Kubernetes cron job may not be the right solution for you, depending on what your environment is like. If you're starting from scratch, how should you approach evaluating cron solutions for your company? When evaluating cron platforms, the first thing you should think about is the user experience. Devs really just want to write and ship code and be confident that if there's an issue, they'll be notified. And when they're notified, they can easily figure out what went wrong and recover. So the very first thing they should do when picking a cron platform is talk to your users, figure out what their workflows are like and what they need out of a cron environment because what users might want might differ a lot from might differ a lot from what you might want as a platform engineer. 
But as a platform engineer, what should that experience be like? So the major thing that platform engineers are concerned about is the performance of the platform. How easy is to monitor the reliability of jobs on your cron solution? You want to look at things like failure rate, time it takes to start running application code, um, how well it scales as more and more cron jobs are added to your environment. So these are all things that you want to think about. You know, are they built into your cron platform or do you have to add some stuff in order to have those metrics and be alerted on them? Features aside, there are many hidden costs that you might not think about when using a new tool like Kubernetes cron jobs, like how much do you expect your devs to know about Kubernetes and how much effort is it to train them? How much are you willing to invest in smoothing out some of the rough edges of Kubernetes? For example, at Lyft, we already had a lot of infrastructure and tooling in place for things like observability and reliability, so we only needed to plug in some modifications um, into them in order to reap the benefits. And lastly, along the way, there will definitely be a lot of incidents. How good is your learning culture? And how resilient is the business to incidents that will inevitably happen? Hopefully the picture is starting to get a bit more clear. As engineers, we can often get pulled into deep, pulled in deep into the nitty gritty of technical complexity. Evaluating tools and technologies from a technical perspective is certainly valuable, but more often than not, the challenging part is bridging the gap between human and technology. At the end of the day, there will be other human beings using the tools you build and offer. So think a lot about how humans interact with your systems. So to conclude, not all hope is lost. Recently, a KEP was merged um, for graduating cron jobs to GA. And it's really exciting to see some progress being made in this area. And I especially like how um, this time there's a lot more concern around observability and performance scaling of cron jobs. So kudos to the Kubernetes team, and I'm definitely looking forward to uh, playing around with the new cron job API when it comes out. But all things Kubernetes aside, talk to your users, have real conversations with engineers at your company, and ask them what they really need from your infrastructure. And lastly, Kubernetes is no silver bullet, but don't be afraid to get your hands dirty anyways, and Try to bring it closer to something that is usable in the real world. And that's it. Thanks for taking the time to listen to my talk on Kubernetes cron jobs at Lyft. If you're interested in working on challenging problems related to running Kubernetes at scale, um, then uh, feel free to send me an email. And meanwhile, check out our careers page at lyft.com careers for current openings. Thanks.